Welcome to another episode of the Theater Professor Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I am the Theater Professor. And here we are continuing our series on Art Rage for the Desktop. As you can see, we have the program open and we are ready to work. All right. If you don't have the program, you can easily download a free trial where there is no expiration date from www.artrage.com. So if you're just stumbling across this uh, tutorial and you want to play with the program a little bit, well, Artrage allows you to do that. You can stop by my website, www.thetheaterprofessor.com, and under resources, you can actually find a link there to Artrage for you to be able to download the free trial. This week we are going to be talking uh, about tools again because, well, because we need to. Last week we talked a little bit about the um, the ability to import presets and export presets, uh, whether they are native to ArtRage or if they were Photoshop brushes. So I feel like going back to the tools this week is probably a good idea. I'm a little sleepy, so I apologize for that. And uh, but but you know it happens. You get a little tired every once in a while. All right, so we're going to start right now with uh, with the watercolor brush. And watercolor is one of my favorites. I love watercolor. And what I'm going to do today is I'm not only going to show you how to use the watercolor brush, but some tips and tricks to make it feel a little more watercolor like, because. What I would say is with the initial settings of the watercolor brush, they're not quite there yet. All right, so we have, whoa, my brush is huge right now, so I'm going to reduce the size of that. Again, the shortcut for reducing or increasing the size, if you're using a tablet of some sort, for example, I'm using the Intuos Pro, is to hold the shift button down, put your pen, uh, your, your um, stylus, to your pad and move it left or right. I couldn't think of the name stylus. I wanted to call it a pen or pencil, but that's not what it is. It is indeed a stylus. So if I press shift, set my stylus to the pad and move it left or right, you see I increase or decrease. So we've decreased it a little bit, so it's a little more manageable right now. We're gonna, um, we're gonna go ahead and grab settings and turn that on and presets and turn that on. Now I'm in the original watercolor group in the presets, the one that comes with it. Now there are a couple of things you'll see. Blender, Not Bad, WC, and Watercolor. Those are three, three, um, three settings that I saved because I thought they worked decently well. All right, so as you can see here, we have pressure, we have thinners, we have loading, we have color bleed, paper wet, Insta dry and auto clean. I'm gonna have to yawn. I apologize. It's been a long day. And I'm not one to cut and edit film. I mean I do, but I'm I'm working on trying to do these as one shot projects. So let's look at the pressure here. It's pressure. It's how hard or light you press. If we were to well, we can't take down thinners of well we can take down thinners. Let's take down thinners and loading and color bleed. And I don't think I'll get anything right now. Oh, I do. Okay, so pressure. But that's as much as I get. I'm not lifting my pen. It just stops right there. This is with thinners and loading down to zero. And pressure at 50. If we take our pressure up to 100, it gets bigger. Take it back down to zero, smaller. So we'll go back to 50. And remember, you can click in the box and actually type the number percentage-wise if you'd like. Thinners, let's move thinners all, actually, let's do loading next. If I do loading all the way to 100, you can see, notice how I'm just still going. And it's actually never, I don't think it ever runs out with loading at 100. If we were to take loading to, say, 50, See how it runs out? Just like, you know, if you're using real watercolor, right? It's not like you have an infinite supply of watercolor on your brush. Let's take loading up to like 79. There we go. And every time you lift your brush, it resets. 
So if I do, let me clear this. If I do this and then lift and do it again and lift, this time I'm not going to lift until it runs out. Okay. So that's loading. Let's take loading. We'll leave loading at 100 for now. Take thinners to 100. It's invisible. It's because I completely thinned it out. So let's do it something like 86 or 85. So there, notice, also notice that there is, well, right now there's not, but it's very thin, very thin. If I were to turn on the InstaDry, you could build this up over layers. And my heat just came on. That means it's going to be a little nice and toasty warm in here. Okay, so we're building up, building up, building up. All right, let me turn it to dry back off. We have color bleed. I'm going to take color, we'll take thinners all the way back down. Take color bleed all the way up. Okay, so we've got our blue here. If I then change my color to say red. It bleeds and we get a nice little purple. Well, kind of. Again, it is digital, so there are some, you know, differences to it. If we take our thinner all the way up, oh, well, not all the way. Uh, let's see, color bleed at 50. Take our thinners back down to zero. Lay down some red. Then grab a blue. And you see it starts to bleed a little bit. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Oops. There we go. I'm zooming way in. Let's go back here. Let's, um, again, let's kind of get, lay down some red, then switch over to blue. If I take color bleed all the way up, Okay. Um, you know, it. This is right on top. If I take color bleed down to zero. Okay. So the higher the color bleed, the more it covers the previous color. Again, this is so. This is color bleed at zero. This is color bleed at a hundred. And this is color bleed at about 50. Okay. And then you've got, again, you've got your Insta Dry, which we showed just a few minutes ago. We have our paper wet. I lay down. And you see the fuzziness on the outside edge. You turn paper wet off. And you see how it's much rougher on the outside edge as if it were drying on the paper okay so the paper wet gives you a, a softer edge and then of course you've got auto clean which we've talked about before See, mixing colors, creating new colors. And then once I clean it, it goes back to its original color. All right. So those are the settings. Okay. So those are the things that we can play with. But if you notice, as we're looking here, it doesn't, it doesn't really have a feeling of watercolor, right? 
I mean, a little bit maybe here and there, but there are things that are definitely not watercolor-like. Um, let me grab, I have a couple of different watercolors. Where's the one? Here we go, a dirty brush. Okay, we're gonna use this, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different things that you can do to improve the look of your watercolor. Okay, so this is just a, this is a preset brush that I downloaded, and it, it, you now know how to download brush sets. So this is one that I got off of the Art Rage forums. Okay, so it doesn't really feel like watercolor. The first thing you can do is something that you can do just like when you're doing uh, your painting in the iPad app is that you can use you can use your palette knife to fuzz out your outside edges a little bit. And they, again, here are some presets that I've I've downloaded. Um, yeah, uh, Sumi blending. There we go. Now you see how much nicer that looks. That, to me, has a much better feel of watercolor. So I've laid down my, my initial colors, my brush, um, using the watercolor brush. And then I, I go in and I clean up some of the edges. And you can use, I've got different presets that create different edge looks. Okay, but there, now we're starting to feel like a watercolor. Now, again, this is digital art. It's different than natural media. Okay, let's go back in, grab another one. Now, the other thing you can do is to add a layer and paint over top of it, but you want to change your settings. You want to change your blend mode. And I usually use multiply. Sometimes I'll use watercolor, but let's grab multiply. Oops. Let's go ahead and thin us up a little bit. There we go. And then... And maybe we grab, we need a significantly different color. There we go. And you notice I'm constantly changing adjustments. There isn't a one size fits all here. Again, I feel like the edges are a little too smooth. And maybe not do all the edges. Leave some hard edges too. Right? Come in here. You can see I'm just kind of playing. There is no Okay, my blobby mess. But you start to see how this could translate into watercolor much better than if you just tried to do it on one layer. I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna grab this brush, go back to my original layer. I'm gonna change my thinners. There we go. Come back to this second layer, second layer. Got my palette knife. OK. 
okay? But there's a third trick that you can do, and you saw it last week a little bit when I started to play with um, essentially what is your layered texture, okay? So if we tap the layer texture from the layers menu, you get this. And generally speaking, you're going to use the canvas texture, but we're going to change that. We're going to open up our canvas collection and we're going to find something different to put down. Now I have a couple of downloaded here, traditional media and um, my Yotex paper. So I'm actually going to grab my cardboard and see how that looks. Oops. Oopsie. I'm in palette knife. That's not going to help. There we go. And you see how the edges are a little more watercolor-esque? And I can change that even more if I come in here. A little more uneven, a little more ragged. Okay. There are other layer textures you can choose from. And you can even download more, right? Because again, this is one of my downloaded. Here's a watercolor paper. Let's see what that does. That's not bad. That's the edging again. And the more I play with it, the more we create. But you can start to see how these, this green here, green here, green here, these are starting to give us that, that expressiveness of watercolor because that's what it is, right? Watercolor has a certain expressiveness to it. It has a, a playfulness, a uh, uncertainty to it because it, you know, the way it moves on the paper, which is, this is, this is something that's very hard to replicate in the digital world. Uh, Corel Pater does it kind of, um, Art Rage here does it kind of, but it's still, it's still not exactly watercolor. So again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to replicate uh, as best we can in, in the digital world watercolor. So if we come in here, let's clear these layers. And real quick, let's draw a circle. Draw a circle. And... You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to... Oops. Undo that. So horrible at circles. One of these days, a circle will appear. There, that's close. Okay, so we have our circle. I'm going to grab my watercolor brush. Let's see. Actually, I like to keep my pencil layer different and on top of everything else. There we go. So, we, oh, there we go. Come in. Do, 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 do. Again, I'm going for an unevenness. I don't want it even. Okay. So we've got that. I'm going to go to our second layer. And we're actually going to pull some of this in. Okay. Good. That's what I want. And what we'll do is my layer texture is currently set at one that I found uh, online. We're going to go back to it. We're going to do watercolor paper here. Uh, you know, there's, there's lots of different ones that you can get, but we're just going to do the watercolor paper. Click OK. And we are going to, my thinners are at 84%. Thinners are usually, when I'm dealing with watercolor, that's what I'm changing over here the most because it's as if I've got more or less water in the, in the brush. So I come in here, I lay down some of this. Again, this is on a different layer. 
maybe grab my there we go and then oftentimes what I will do is I will duplicate the layer and then I will clear that layer that way it has the same settings as the previous layer and come in here and add in maybe another layer of shadow right here and maybe only do a I'm doing a non-circular lemonish type feel. Okay. Maybe come. And then what I also will use when doing watercolor is the sticker spray. There are a lot of wonderful, like here, my sponges. I'll grab this. Again, I tend to do things on a new layer. First I clear it. There we go. And what we need is we need... Mm, too big. Let's see what else we got here. Sometimes it's just a matter of playing with things. Okay. Let's... Too big. I'm actually going to cover the entire thing with this. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. Because I don't like the harshness of it. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll come over and change the opacity a little. There we go. I like subtlety sometimes. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Too far. Make that smaller. Just doing some array, quick erase. Oops. And oh, I've got in here another preset, Whisper Eraser. Which will allow me to pull out some color here. So we get maybe a little bit of a a little bit of a highlight. And there we go. Okay. Um, it, right now, for example, I'm looking at this and I'm going, Ugh, it's a little too meh, muddy. I guess would be the best way to put it. Maybe I don't like the color all that great. Um, you can adjust different settings. Oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, let's see. Color options. I'm just looking at different thing. layer options. There we go. That's not helping me as I thought it was going to. Okay, what if this is how this is a lot of times when I'm working on these things, this is how I play. I just kind of sit here and go, well, what if or oh, that's right, blend mode. No, that's not what I want either. <laughs> okay, so I was I'm just trying to figure out what I want to change. Adjust, go back to multiply. There we go. So you can kind of see how to create watercolors. It's not just laying water to the paper. There are other things that you have to do. Um, and so the things that, that I tend to do, other than obviously using the brush, brush, is I tend to keep my paint a little thinner so that I am creating looks that that are translucent because paint, you know, watercolor paint is translucent. I you, I change the um, I change the layer texture, and if you're looking for more layer textures, what you want to do oh there's CNN is go to 
again the forums so we're gonna go ahead and do one right now so you can kind of see and go down to art supplies and let's find we want something rough so something like um, uh, let's just do a search for texture paper and see what comes up let's see what we got um, and I'm looking what I'm looking for here are any downloads that um, that can help to create this textured feel and I'm just like looking you know I don't importing on canvas textures that's what we're gonna be doing let's do this let's come here we'll search just this forum there we go um, concrete no sometimes it takes a few minutes um, paper oh scan papers and a lot of times not only will they see yep okay so they'll give you images of what the papers look like so that's got some nice one color drawing papers traditional media surfaces I'm looking for something pretty specific rough oops I'm looking for rough texture and I'm not gonna find it right I found it very easily um, when I was at school the other day uh, let's see rough paper but now when I want to find it concrete texture <laughs> no matches and I'm failing miserably here so you guys can make fun of me later um, yep I'm not gonna be able to find it so I apologize ooh pallets uh, I apologize and when I do find it which will probably happen as soon as I finish this video it'll be like oh oh there we go that's what I was looking for so it's one of those things where you just kind of you have to do a search you have to look around you know I'm I'm just kind of scanning this here's scan oh we looked at the scan papers um, you just kind of have to look around because there is so much so many people on the website offer so many different things that it's it's wonderful oh here we go some oh some lovely textures see this is what I'm talking about that sometimes you can just sit here and go through and I, I remember vividly doing that on the first day just sitting here going through trying to find uh, different textures different uh, different grains all sorts of different things so that I could play with it because I was you know I was just testing it out all right well I don't want to waste your time too much so and it's not it's not showing up quickly and um, you know these are one of the things that you can do but but look for here's a traditional media surfaces or that's I actually have that in mind that's a really good one um, but kind of have fun and look through here and and find textures uh, oh that's a sticker spray oh I thought I had found it and download them and and what's the worst that can do is if you don't like it you just never use it again you know it, it won't it won't affect what you're creating which is good I will uh, I'll do a little more search to see if I can find that uh, that texture that I like at school or maybe oops that's not what I wanted or, or maybe I will um, actually download it back from that computer as a new package and I'll put that up for download for you guys with credit given because it's not my texture pack but it's a very good texture pack I'm gonna grab one more here just to show you again 
I'm making um, I'm making a brand new layer. This is without duplicating. You come in, you edit your layer texture, you unclick that. You're going to go to Canvas Collection, and in here you're going to find something. So let's go, for example, Canvas. Let's go to Rough Canvas. Click OK. Check. And that doesn't really have a texture I like. So I'm going to go back. And that's the other thing. You know, don't, don't be afraid to experiment. That's when you really find, find the interesting stuff is when you, when you experiment. Cockled paper. Nope, that doesn't do anything. I mean, it does, but n not to my satisfaction. Rough. Let's try stucco. I don't think I've tried stucco. Now, I'm very particular. Special. Cold foil. Ugh. What do I have in here? No. Ooh. Nope. <laughs> okay, well. You get the idea. It's experimentation. Ooh. I just think I was on the wrong layer. So let's do this. I'm going to move that there. I'm going to edit this layer texture. And it was the cotton rag. Actually, let's do parchment. I'm just going to give it a nice little... Now, if you notice, I'm going over right now because I'm a big fan of then coming back in and adjusting some of your edges via eraser as well as with your palette knife. Then coming back in... Oops! I meant to duplicate my layer. And then clearing it, and then coming in here. There we go. Okay. So you can see that once you take the time to sit and and play and learn, you can start to mimic watercolor really nice. Don't. Don't be stuck with just using the initial settings. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some, there, there is a learning curve in regards to this. And as you get better, as you progress, what you'll see is you'll see some nice changes in what you're creating. I'm going to create a little, oops, I'm on palette knife. That's not what I wanted. Just creating a table here for this lemon to sit on. Faux lemon, not a real lemon. And then grabbing this. There we go. Okay. All right. That's it for this week. Uh, a lot of this, again, is plain. This is the watercolor brush that we played with. Uh, I want to see some of your creations. So leave me a link. Drop me a line, leave me some feedback at www.thetheaterprofessor.com. I want to see what type of watercolors you are creating with this program. Uh, you know, this is, it's, it's versatile, it's fun, it, is, uh, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get there, once you um, have learned the ins and outs, which, which is not always easy with a program like this, that's when it really starts to pay dividends okay um, so don't be afraid to, uh, oh see and that's and here's one of those things so I need to change this blend mode to multiply 
and then I can clear it. I like to add color to things. There we go. Okay, but yeah, so go ahead, leave me, leave me something so that I can see how you guys are doing. Um, it, it's exciting for me. I like to see it. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, we focused on watercolor this week. Next week, we'll look at another thing. Uh, and, and these tutorials will keep coming out until we get all the way through Art Rage for the iPad. This is not iPad. This is Art Rage for the desktop. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I am the theater professor.